Hello, my name is Reverend C. Anthony Hunt, and I serve as the chair of the Baltimore Washington Conference Board of Ordained Ministry. During the 2019-20 conference year, the Board of Ordained Ministry of the Baltimore Washington Conference has served on behalf of all persons across the conference called to representative ministries of the church as licensed, commissioned, and ordained persons. The board is comprised of 60 lay and clergy persons who serve on behalf of more than 1,200 persons under our care as either candidates for ministry, actively commissioned provisional members, deacons and elders in full connection, and retired members. We represent the diversity of the Baltimore Washington Conference geographically, racially, and theologically. This year, the board has sought to strengthen its work by engaging in several initiatives, including working throughout the year to continue to clarify and affirm our values and have continued to engage in cultural competency training with the entire board, completing the intercultural development inventory. We have continued to work to strengthen relationships with the seminaries with which we relate and have worked with members of the Baltimore Washington Conference Cabinet and staff to develop a framework and policy for sexual ethics and boundaries. Additionally, the board has developed several policies related to continuing education and the use of ministerial education funds. An important new initiative of the Board of Ordained Ministry is the conference-wide gender and ministry study being led by Board Vice Chair, Dr. Amy McCullough. Dr. McCullough will now come to share about the work of the Gender and Ministry team. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. Today, I am joined by the Reverend Dr. Hero Park, Dr. Debbie Haskins, and other members of the Board of Ordained Ministry to introduce to you an upcoming study. Women have been a part of the body of Christ since the beginning. Standing at the foot of Jesus' cross, providing resources for Peter and Paul, and Mary running from the tomb to proclaim the resurrection. Women have been an integral part of the Methodist movement including Susanna Wesley, Sojourner Truth, Jarena Lee, Georgia Harkness, Gail. Anna Howard Shaw, Prudencia Fabro, Mary McLeod, Bethune. Hak Young Cho Kim. Fanny Crosby. Julia Torres Fernandez. Peggy Johnson. Dorothy Height. Anita Phillips. Methodist women have been and continue to be courageous trailblazers, essential to the life of our denomination, Christ's universal church, and the world. History also tells us that women have not always been viewed as equal players in the church's life. We can read about struggles women faced and overcame to be admitted to educational institutions, be granted the leadership roles, or full voting rights as ordained members of an annual conference. For every trailblazing woman whose story we know of, there are countless other women whose voices have been lost forgotten or buried. Furthermore, the stories of the past find root in the present. Present day, clergy are not immune from sexist attitudes or comments. 
gender being used as a barrier toward the flourishing ministries and even sexual harassment. The Board of Ordained Ministry believes one of its primary roles is that of stewardship, serving as caretakers of the lives of you who have undertaken the challenging work of set-apart ministry. We are stewards of policies, structures, and examinations. Most of all, we are stewards of people, people who have stories to tell of how God has worked in and through your unique life. You have stories to tell about the challenges you have faced, the ways God has been faithful, and about those places where there is still work to do. In March, the board voted to launch a conference-wide study on gender and ministry to explore how gender impacts one's call, candidacy process, appointment history, ministry, expectations, and satisfaction. A similar study was conducted by this conference in the early 2000s, and we are indebted to that foundational work for this next step in the journey. Because gender cannot be separated from other aspects of personhood, the study also will attend closely to race. And because ministry is not just about ordained persons, but the laity who comprise our churches and share the ministry, the study will invite the laity of this conference to participate as well. The gender and ministry study will consist of two parts. The first part will be an online questionnaire asking about your experiences in the topics just named. Everyone is encouraged to participate by completing the questionnaire. The second part of the study will be the opportunity to sit for an in-person interview where the same topics of call, candidacy, and ministry experiences can be explored in greater depth. The study will launch in January 2021 and most likely run through June 2022. The results of the study will be shared with both the executive session and the entire annual conference. So look for your invitation to be part of this study in early January. And please participate so that your story can become even more fully a part of our common story. And to the women of this conference, you are a gift to the church. We are excited to be on a quest of learning more about you so that God may be glorified, and we together as Christ's body can become more perfect in love. Another aspect of the Board of Ordained Ministries work is developing an ongoing framework for encouraging a culture of the call. The Reverend Jenny Smith will now share about the ongoing work of our culture of the call team. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Reverend Dr. Jenny Smith, and I lead the Culture of Call Committee, a part of our Board of Ordained Ministry. Our team seeks to foster a culture of care for those who are living out their call to ministry and seeks to encourage and go alongside those who are beginning to listen and understand God's call to ministry. This year, perhaps more than any other in our memory, living out our call is complicated and just plain exhausting. Those of us who have served for many years, together with those who are just beginning to live the call of ministry, are needing to continually adapt to new ways to serve. Changes that would typically take years or even decades, we are being asked to make them overnight. Friends, if you are feeling ill-equipped or inadequate, know that you are right. Nothing has prepared us for this unexpected moment. 
but also you are not alone. You are not the only one who is feeling stretched to your ends. You are not the only one who is grieving the days when you felt competent to do what you were called to do. You are not alone. God is with us, and we are in this together as the company of the saints, those who live around us, those who have gone before us, and even the host of biblical characters, Abraham and Sarah, Deborah and Moses, Ruth, Jeremiah, David, Samuel, Matthew, John, Peter, Paul, Mary and Lydia, they were all called for new moments where they were ill-prepared for the ministries that God believed they could achieve. In this moment, I encourage you, we encourage you to return to your call. Lean into the God who called you. Invite God to clarify how you, with the gifts you do have, with the strength God will give, with the support of those who are around you, how you can minister in this moment, how you can show kindness, seek justice, and walk humbly with your God. Friends, you cannot do it all, but what you do do is significant. We encourage you to connect with colleagues. God has called us into community, particularly in this moment. This is a season for listening to each other, praying together, and supporting one another faithfully. Consider the colleagues who can support you, and look around your field of ministry and consider those who are new, who might benefit from your outreach and support. Our team is also offering more formal avenues to rejuvenate you through virtual and outdoor clergy care groups. You can find these resources on our website. In this time, we also have a message for those of you who are just beginning to sense God's call on your life. God has a tendency to call new leaders for a new season. The church which emerges from this pandemic will be forever changed. And God knows who God will need to lead that new church. If you sense that God is calling you to serve, speak with your pastor. Those who hear the call in this season will be as diverse and as unique as the challenges we face. Don't dismiss the call. Trust God to know who God is calling. And pastors, keep your eyes and ears open for those who are hearing a new word from the Lord. In this season when much is canceled, we are wise to focus on equipping new leaders for the new day of ministry that will emerge. In this season, we have suffered many losses. We grieve, we struggle. Let us lean into the God who has called us. Let us trust and, and care one another so that we can support and build each other up. And let us look for new persons who God would bring to share the ministry ahead. God bless and keep you. In accordance with paragraph 635 of the 2016 Book of Discipline, an important part of our work is serving as stewards of the process of supporting, evaluating, and examining persons who have offered themselves as candidates for ordained ministry as deacons and elders. Our eight district committees on ministry and the Board of Ordained Ministry have worked tirelessly throughout the year to ensure that processes of evaluation and examination are accomplished with integrity, fairness, and clarity for all candidates and provisional members under our care. We have continued to work to perfect several of the policies and procedures that inform our work for evaluating candidates for ministry with the goal of discerning ways that together we can continue to engage in ministry that, that is faithful and fruitful towards the end of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our communities and the world. As a board, we have performed a full inquiry and examination to discern as to the qualifications, fitness, and readiness for ministry in the United Methodist Church of each of the persons being presented this year as a candidate for commissioning or ordination. The Board of Ordained Ministry has performed a review 
and evaluation of all material presented by each candidate. These materials include undergraduate and graduate academic records, reports on physical, medical, and mental health, financial and criminal background checks, evaluations and recommendations from supervisors, including district superintendents and candidacy mentors, academic faculty, various leaders from each candidate's respective ministry setting, and others as appropriate. The board's full examination and, and inquiry has also included in-person interviews with each candidate, including several hours of conversation and discernment per candidate, and follow-up meetings with particular candidates as the board has deemed necessary. The Board of Ordained Ministry takes this opportunity to thank Bishop Latrell Easterling for her ongoing prayers, support, and guidance of our work, and the Reverend John Knupp, Executive Minister for Call and Clergy Care, for his excellent leadership in managing and facilitating the perfecting of our practices for supporting clergy and those preparing for ordained and licensed ministry. As we conclude this conference year and move forward, we continue to solicit your prayers for our work on behalf of those who seek to serve Christ in the representative ministries of the church, for the Baltimore Washington Conference, the United Methodist Church, and Christ Church Universal. May God bless you and may heaven's face shine upon each and every one of us.